वेलकम बैक फ्रेंड्स कैरिंग फॉरवर्ड विद द डिस्कशन ऑन स्ट्रैटेजिक ऑल्टरनेटिव्स वेर इन वी डिस्कस्ड मार्केट डेवलपमेंट स्ट्रैटेजीज प्रोडक्ट डेवलपमेंट स्ट्रैटेजीज ब्रीफली बिकॉज दैट सेक्शन वुड कम लेटर टू अस वेन वी वुड बी टॉकिंग अबाउट न्यू प्रोडक्ट डेवलपमेंट एंड यू नो डिफरेंट एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ प्रोडक्ट डेवलपमेंट हेयर वी कम टू द स्टेज ऑफ टॉकिंग अबाउट मार्केट एक्सेप्टेंस स्ट्रैटेजीज टेक्स्ट कॉल्स इट मार्केट पेनिट्रेशन स्ट्रैटेजीज ना यू सी हेयर इट इट्स इट्स वन ऑफ द वेज टू इंक्रीज मार्केट शेयर और सेल्स वॉल्यूम यू नो टू इंक्रीज और बाई इंक्रीजिंग द यूसेज द रेट ऑफ यूज of the brands for the brands existing customers you see customer expansion so you see you are adding on customers but focusing upon repeated purchase further acceptance as far as the product goes and and that can be done through slightly reorienting the product usage re i would not say repositioning but adding on positioning elements as far as the product goes and several other ways you see you have to be innovative in terms of uh, applications of product lego toys has been one of my favorite examples and i have been talking about that you know how they improved upon the different shapes and sizes which can evolve out of plastic bricks product managers can obtain more volume from existing customers for example using larger package sizes that is again uh, an unusual practice for example they say that you know uh, this kind of a shampoo bottle it's these are very common examples you all know that wherein you happen to pour more but but these are not so long lasting in character uh, although they have been applied at different levels and and you see ultimately product manager wants more uh, usage by the customer and customer understands that so so it's it's uh, uh nothing related to you know um, uh, somehow deceptively increasing the usage it is actually motivating the customer to use so that is that is the perspective because customer actually is the you know uh, revenue generator for you so the customer is the king you see and and uh, by enhancing the frequency of use i have just mentioned or getting a larger share of the business if the customer uses several vendors you know that is share of wallet basically a second route to increase sales or market share is to attract competitors customers that is customer acquisition that is to induce brand switching mobile communication we have seen this very very common it's it's a it's a you know war like situation when mobile companies say that you switch over from the existing vendor to us basically because of this 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 kind of a reason so that has been an aggressive marketing campaign by several kinds of uh, you know mobile com- mobile service providers you know communication service providers so and then uh, you see ex- there are several examples of market penetration or should i say market acceptance motivating customers to accept the product more someone would say or discuss with you that when you are pushing the product then it it is largely penetration and not acceptance but my argument always is related to that you see ultimately it depends upon the customer acceptance so even if you are trying from your side it is the customer acceptance which matters at the end of the day so that is why i always say examples of market acceptance based strategies a company well known for its ready made soup and powder and uh, you know they they started promoting the same mix for fresh salad seasoning it was the similar product with same price but was promoted to both new and existing customers with a new product usage and we are referring to nestle's maggi masala and this can also be seen with a perspective where an mba program can be launched for almost everyone who is qualified with a bachelor's degree for mba many b schools did that they are inviting engineers commerce students art students so so they have customized their product in such a fashion that everyone can understand with some prerequisites and they have 
sort of categorize some prerequisites for people who are entering with a basic qualifying score in some entrance examination and for example, if someone is from uh, you know non-science stream or art stream or commerce stream has to go through these kind of courses and then everyone is the same platform and good to go. So, that can also be done and then that is how you know courses have been designed and redesigned and as I said that I would be carrying forward with a universal kind of an example for 2-3 stages MBA program is one of those. Let us talk of diversification strategies. The decision to add new product lines to the mix to capture new market is ordinarily described as diversification and it can be materialized through internal research and development, licensing, mergers and acquisitions, joint ventures or alliances and these elements are more discussed in strategic management classes. But product is at the core, marketing is at the core and especially when uh, you know we were talking about the relationship of elements of marketing mix, product price, place, promotion, there was a very specific mention uh, wherein I said that product is at the center, if product is not there, nothing would be there. So, diversification can be distributed further into two parts related that is concentric diversification and unrelated that is you know conglomerate diversification. There are several names given to uh, relation and uh, related and unrelated perspectives. Several text have uh, texts have suggested different kinds of uh, connotations or specific terms for that uh, or interpretations for that, but, but, but uh, you know just to divide them into two parts. So, on the basis of you know relatedness and unrelatedness. Now, when you talk of related diversification, it provides the potential to obtain synergies by the exchange or sharing of skills or resources associated with any functional area such as marketing, production, research and development and so on. Can you use the same production facility in an automotive production process to produce two different kinds of products? Is it possible? There are several manufacturing methodologies in today's world wherein you know those enable you for that. Can you utilize the same human resource for manufacturing different kinds of products? It is very common you know there are consumer product companies which are utilizing the same human resource for manufacturing different kinds of products and different kinds of lines I should say. So, so you see this is, this is a common example on production processes and human resource and, and, and so on. Now one example can be you see the country's first indigenous sewing machine was marketed under the brand name Usha in 1936 a very renowned organization in terms of you know their product uh, and brand equity especially in, in uh, these kind of segments otherwise also. And today the company Usha International a consumer durable company has diversified into many more consumer segments, sewing machines ranging from the basic to high end automated digital ones and I remember my mother used to sew on one of those you know. Usha machines uh, and, and uh, you know that was a delight to watch her. Uh, so, so you know and uh, earlier days almost all the houses they had one of those uh, I do not know exactly how it is going on uh, in at household levels because Usha has gone a long way in terms of you know developing product segments uh, if I remember. So, uh, automated digital machines were also there and then fans, kitchen and home appliances engines and pump sets, electric motors and pumps, drinking water coolers, water dispensers, auto components and several other kinds of products. So, you see to an extent when you go to auto components although there are electrical as uh, electrical parts associated with those auto components as well and because they have been focusing on electrical parts manufacturing. So, it traverses into auto components as well, but to that extent or, or to a larger extent there is a relatedness in you know many of their products in terms of you know uh, the, the fundamental definition which we have referred to here uh, you know uh, with, with uh, a reference point of let us say research and development 
or let us say you know marketing or let us say production and so on. Then comes in unrelated diversification you see here the organization does not have commonality in markets, distribution channels, production technology or R and D it is completely diversified. The objectives are therefore mainly financial to manage and allocate cash flows that is always the objective basically but, but just to you know uh, categorize on what organization has in mind. Otherwise, if you will look at objectives I would say that it is related to the visionary perspective of the organizational leadership where do they want to take their organization in times to come and I am talking of visionary perspective not vision. So, then other objectives can be of generating profit streams that are either large and then uh, you know then then thinking in terms of uh, you know uh, more stability and one of the best and favorite examples I have is Tata group which has diversified into various sectors. Now, here you talk of sectors actually and, and we are going beyond products now you know developing different kinds of streams altogether. So, it is it is slightly bigger in terms of you know the presence of an organization which which start starts with specific product orientation going for lines and widths and then going for larger diversification moving through related diversification towards completely unrelated diversification. And when I would be referring to brand and branding you know that perspective I would tell you that how this enables that organization to diversify so much if at all they think of. For example, you know they are into information technology, Tata consultancy services and LXI. Then automotives we all know their products one of the finest products you know in, in terms of Range Rover and, and uh, Defender one of my favorite examples you know uh, one of the recent launches and one of the finest SUVs they have manufactured in recent times. Then uh, consumer and retail they are into Tata T again a wonderful and very renowned product and uh, then Titan watches and then financial services, tourism and travel they are you know they, they have one of the finest properties all around and then uh, you know uh, for example, if I am not wrong Taj Mauritius is, is a wonderful place and then trading and investments. Then you have you know metals, Tata steels an iconic organization and then products they have. Tata power in infrastructure, Tata housing, jewelry, Tanishq one of the finest known brands in all around and then aerospace and defense and then overall technological development Tata technologies is an exceptional organization then telecom and media Tata Sky, Tata Teleservices and e-commerce Tata Click. So, you see complete spectrum although if you will try you will think in terms of that many of those products they are touching our lives from this or that side in our homes and that can still be a concentricity of an organization which moves around a customer touching the lives of people actually. So, even if it is extremely diversified that perspective always is at the heart of organization and that is why I refer to visionary perspective. Now, let me take you to product decisions. You see the management must first decide what products to offer in the marketplace before other intelligent product decisions pertaining to the products physical attributes packaging branding and so on. And you see there are two distinct levels where decisions are taken and we are talking of strategic perspective. So, we, we are focusing upon time frame steps and elements and here we have to take a call decide on what is to be done. Product manager says that we are going for this today. So, once he says that we are going for this today that can be at the product mix level or product line level. So, in this section or in this session 
the remaining discussion I would have with you is around product mix level and then I would in, in subsequent session I would be coming back to you in product line levels and, and you know further discussion on as far as product decision goes. So, be with me till that time. Now, product mix level decisions, where to focus, how to focus actually. You see when, when we talk of uh, these uh, you know aspects, let us let us you know uh, uh, revisit uh, the aspects of product mix. I have been uh, talking about these, but here I would spend some time. So, you see the committee on definitions of American marketing association has defined product mix as the composite of products offered for sale by a firm or business unit. A company's product mix has a certain width, length, depth and consistency. That means dimensions and consistency in terms of the customer in relation to the dimensions. So, that is how the product mix comes in. Let us talk of width for example. You see the width of a product mix is related to how many different product lines the company carries. We have talked about this earlier as well, but how this width comes into being? Let us briefly ponder upon this. You see the width, the logic of the width is the is associated with the desire of the organization and the product managers to serve the same customers with different kinds of products. How they get motivated towards that? They get motivated towards that because the customer says so that he or she is satisfied with their services, their products and they desire if they could have offered something of this sort. Patanjali has gone for a larger width all through because they know that they have satisfied customers in various product lines which they are creating. So, they, they created a line and they realize that they have to go for a width or many a times many organizations they go for several different kinds of products that means initiating different lines all together and then developing those lines. So, there can be a logic to everything, but that has to be a customer driven logic. Then comes in the length. The length of a product mix refers to the total number of items in the mix and here I should suggest one thing which is very important. The text also says that the length of a line can also be there. So, you see length can be seen both ways, but in terms of numbers. So, when you talk of length, so it is you know average number of uh, products in a line that, that can be seen with reference to the length of the product line actually. And we understand that it is related to variation. We have talked about the relationship of production line and product line and you know wherein where variation comes because of the reason of production as well as the customer feedback both ways. So, then comes in depth the subsequent point and depth of a product mix refers to how many variants are offered of each product in the line. This depth perspective is also associated with the timing of introduction of a variant. You never simultaneously do that. You may think in terms of introducing those in subsequent successions if you are focusing upon you know mark larger market acceptance by the similar kinds of customers while simultaneously adding on customers one by one. Now, if you are adding on larger target segments the, the, the you know market spheres the newer spaces then definitely you may think in terms of introducing you know simultaneous variants in, in terms of whole of the width or let us say uh, continuously one or two variants are introduced all depends upon what kind of market growth potential you foresee. Again revisiting that element of product life cycle once again you are foreseeing growth or you are coming out of saddle 
and you want to grow sharp your advertising is working your 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 message is playing its role and i will be talking about this later on that there is a brand resonance awareness has been generated you know satisfaction is coming in and there you decide for you know putting on lots of variants then comes in another logical aspect you see we want to develop variants but there has to be a consistency it can go towards extreme diversification also we have talked about that but you see more the consistency is there the better would be you know the uh, the logical uh, you know reach to the customer with so many products having similar customers in front of you because there you would not have to go for several kinds of behavioral analysis remember one thing if you have known customers loyal customers and you are adding similar customers so there would not be lots of behavioral fluctuation and if there, there would not be i am not saying this is a formula but if there would not be larger if there would not be larger behavioral fluctuation then there would be a better chance for you to actually continuously support or serve the customer in a better way it's it's a mutual long term understanding wherein lots of synchronization would work for both so consistency of the product mix describes how closely related the various product lines are in end use production requirements that makes lots of sense because that will save lots of cost actually and that is that is going to enhance profitability at the level of maturity wherein you know number of customers would be getting stabilized so production requirements distribution channels your retailers would be happy that this company is giving me all the products i need to serve the customer in this particular sphere the segment or some other way you know there has to be a synchronization between as far as you know the relatedness of the products in the marketing mix and i'll spend few more moments on this beautiful picture in front of you wherein you know you can change the name cadbury's to other and then you have to subsequently change the names below as well but but let's look at this example of cadbury's product mix you see one line is of chocolates and then you have a length starting from dairy milk to temptations to boneville to five star to perk fuse etc and if you will look at this length you would appreciate one thing that all these products are differently positioned many a times focusing upon the same customer with different kinds of product inputs or in many cases you would realize that there is a customer overlap as well as newer customers so so whole lots of combinations are there many a times you would realize when you will simultaneously plot these products on a product life cycle you know uh, two dimensional plane you would realize that uh, many a times one life cycle is supportive of the other life cycle i would not take you into that complexity but i have just given you a uh, food for thought on that and and that is what organizations want remember we are talking of commonalities of production and marketing processes retail outlets here cost rationalization is one of the most important elements and then within dairy milk you have crackle crackle almond fruit and nut and silk am i sounding someone from their production or product team or marketing team no no i am not but but i love this product as everyone does so you see there is a depth aspect associated the kind of you know variants and then you would realize if you will just go into their history when these variants were launched so how this length was built and how these variants were launched basically so you will realize the timing associated with that and length 
talks about you know the number of different products in the width basically, but as I mentioned that length is associated with line as well on an average when you will calculate. So, then goes you know biscuits, Oreo and then subsequently you know cream biscuits then comes in chocolate and some as, as we talked about sizes and, and sizes of packs and we mentioned uh, you know we talked about packaging also. So, here it works and when you talk of packaging in these kind of cases production you know last part of production facility that has to be slightly differentiated that that has to be augmented because you know packing has to be changed not in the, uh, the you know color or those kind of things, but several other elements in terms especially in terms of sizes. Then comes in choco sandwich, delight, cookies, nibbly fingers and so on. Now, looking at these two lines, do you find some commonality in the customers? Because the story started from there actually. And what kind of a competition do you foresee in terms of? And when you, you are looking at customers and competition, then can you think of that which of the products you know have larger number of loyal customers and because of the customer loyalty towards those products in these lines Cadbury is getting benefited by selling other products as well. That means loyalty to one product by the customer of the customer is supporting the sales of other products to that same customer as well. There we would find you know some branding element and again brand equity perspective awareness and those kind of elements, but, but then you know let us look at you know briefly look at beverages and candies and gums and bakery products wherein donuts, muffin, mini brownie, cornflake cluster is also there, but beverages especially because I am, I am referring to you know branding element here. So, Bon Vita and you know very well known product and here one thing which I should mark out in front of you as well. Do you find some of these names that you did not know are manufactured by Cadbury's? Do you find or, or uh, at least you find some names here which you knew are manufactured by Cadbury's and you did not notice that that means those names were more prominent as compared to the name of the manufacturer itself. If you are finding that that is where the brand strength of an individual product comes into play and we will be talking of that. So, but when we talk of 5 star magic for example and where we have seen 5 star under chocolates that you know that is where we are talking of you know one line supporting the other line as such. So, uh, uh, you know someone a customer a consumer liking 5 star may think in terms of 5 star magic as well. And you see that again is very specifically associated with tang or cocoa powder or hot chocolate drink powder etcetera and so on. So, you see uh, that is the concept of you know product mix with elements of length in width as well as the line then elements of depth and you know all with the point of view of product consistency the relatedness which is associated with you know uh, the fact that how closely related the various product lines are in end use production requirements 5 star 5 star magic think of those elements I am not sure how technically uh, you know I am close to as far as production requirements go in this, this example, but uh, somehow marketing definitely it, it resonates. So, production requirements distribution channels or some other way and in any case distribution channels definitely can be common for almost all the products here. And that is you know 
the the magic of uh, product strategy with the perspective of a product manager who is trying to develop coherence all through start thinking like product managers start putting different examples here in these kind of charts start working on defining length line width and consistency along with depth for yourself start reading different examples in cases i'll be coming back to you with lots of other insights till then goodbye